Okay, this is uh, first test of a battery powered induction heater. So, have this quadcopter battery hooked up. See this power meter, and I have a steel washer and a beaker. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just let this off and see what it draws without anything. Okay, so that's good. Only half amp. So, so now it's drawing two amps there. Okay, so this is a test of a battery powered induction heater. So I'll put a link to where I got all this stuff in the description. This is a power meter. I have uh, two four cell uh, quad copper batteries hooked up in series. And I have this pancake coil here. I have this beaker with a steel bolt inside and we'll see how much this draws so there we go so 33 volts one amp no load and there we go the load we're pulling 31 volts five amps that bolt is heating up you can see the water starting to heat up. Volts, five amps. Water is boiling. Now this will pull more depending on the load. So if we use this cast iron skillet, it should pull more. It's pretty hot. So let's see. Yeah, so now it's pulling 15 amps, about 28.7 volts. So this is, this skillet is heating up. Yep. So you could use something like this for an alternative to propane when you're camping. So you would basically just charge up your batteries, uh, bring a little skillet. You could make a bigger coil than this. You could also put a, a third battery in series for even more power. But uh, as you can see, this is plenty enough power to cook with. You know, you cook some eggs cook whatever you want so you can see that this is also capable of heating up with the normal coil that comes with the unit so right now it's pulling seven amps should be garbage heating up it's not as quickly as using the power supply, but you can see that it's battery powered and it is definitely getting the screwdriver pretty hot. So you could use this uh, as a, uh, a tool to loosen up seized bolts where fire would be a bad idea, such as like near fuel lines if you're working on a car or an airplane. Sometimes they'll use a similar battery powered induction unit to heat up the bolts to uh, loosen them. So, yeah. And if you wanted even more power, you could definitely add another battery. These quad copper batteries can put out insane amounts of current, so they can definitely handle it as long as you make sure you don't discharge them too much. So it'd be a good idea to put a LiPo checker on those white connectors right there. So.
All right, so now I have three batteries hooked up, all in series, to the induction heater, the ZVS driver, and I uh, have power meter here. This is a lipo checker, so it will monitor the voltage level of each cell, and uh, it'll it'll go off once the voltage dips below 3.3 volts per cell. It's really important that you keep the battery from discharging completely. You'll uh, not only ruin the battery, but you could cause a fire. So, all right, let's see what she does to this graphite crucible. So let's just turn it on, see what it pulls with no load. Okay, so 48 volts, five amps, that's good. So now we're going to creep this crucible in there so about 30 amps 38 volts 26 amps right now that this crucible is heating up so you see it's actually dipping dipping below the level but uh, we're gonna keep it on to just show you that uh, you can heat this crucible up quite hot. So let's see how hot that is. Okay. So right now that's pushing. over 1700 degrees Fahrenheit it's still pulling you can get these batteries uh, um, you could do the same thing with one large battery uh, right now it's pretty hot so I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off it is uh, really hot right now 1800 degrees 1900 degrees thousand two thousand degrees so that's uh, what you can do with battery powered induction heater and these batteries are just fine they sag a little when it when it draws so um, we can check the voltage right now let's see um, try to do this one here okay yeah, so uh, right now each cell will show, and these batteries are just fine. So if you look on these batteries, these quadcopter batteries, what you'll see is, so this is a 1300 milliamp hour battery, four cell. So when it's fully charged, it's uh, each cell is about 4.2 volts, right? So what you do is to, uh, you see this 35C, 70C burst rate? So you take 1.3 amp hours and you multiply that by 70 and that will be your burst current. So 1.3 times 35C is the amperage that you'll get for a constant draw, which is pretty insane. So that these three batteries can put out quite a lot of power. So so if you wanted to, you could use a pancake coil like the one I had. You can uh, you could bring it camping, and you could just have a bunch of batteries instead of gas. Yeah, uh, you can do a lot of things with this. So there's a lot of uses for a battery-powered uh, induction heater. You could seize bolts, like I said before. You can cook with it. You could solder with it this will also you you know heat up the uh, solder pot that you've seen in the previous versions so uh yeah it's a lot of uh, a lot of uses for battery powered induction heaters so all right thanks for watching all right guys so on the next induction heating video i'll be showing you how to case harden tools with an induction heater so uh stay tuned for that and uh see you next time